Hello, everybody, and welcome to another MXGP of Isolation virtual studio show here with me, Paul Malin, and Lisa Leyland. Today's guest will be Gautier Paulin. But uh, before we catch up with the uh, Monster Energy factory Yamaha rider, uh, Lisa, how are you? Uh, you seem to have been a little bit quiet on TikTok this week, which means you've found <laughs> <laughs> maybe one or two things more to do, maybe a few more outside adventures, something like that. What can I say? The the quarantine made me do it, Paul. You know, if you can't beat them, join them. Um, but yeah, we've been allowed out now. So I've been actually going outside the house and getting my life back. So that's probably why I've been quiet. All right. Well, look, uh, let's crack on with the show because, uh, as we said, Gautier Paulin, Monster Energy Factory MXGP team, joins us now from France. Uh, Gautier, welcome to our studio show. Um, before we go anywhere, though, the last time you were on our show, this happened. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> What's happened? <laughs> Here we go. This happened last time we were on the show. Um, I think Lisa got herself all in a bit of a spin look, judging by the freeze frame. <laughs> I love live tech. Here we go. I can describe you in five words. All right, you start yeah. and they continue. You <laughs> Tall, tough, <tar>, handsome, <laughs> fast, <laughs> big hands. <laughs> big hands. They are definitely big hands, Mortier, definitely. Anyway. The big hands. <laughs> <laughs> the big hands but um anyway lisa i hope you're going to behave yourself this week absolutely always <laughs> well look welcome to scratch and sniff tv guys you both look amazing and smell great um <laughs> gotcha so you're in the south of france uh, how is it down there it's great you know i could join my family after the quarantine so that's the main thing you know we are healthy and everybody is away from that uh, virus that's the that's the first goal right now still because we are away from racing so everything goes great i'm a happy happy person and the family is safe so um great i can see that the team is back walking and stuff so it's uh, it's really good everything goes positive right now we are on the green zone Good. And of course, what have you been doing since the last GP? And I mean, I have seen that you are riding again. Yes. So after the last GP, uh, obviously, I get some rest. So uh, around 10 days just to uh, keep my cardio on, but just resting a bit because we didn't know where, uh, where that situation was going on. And, uh, and then I start back again training. I had all the, the tools, you know, to work hard at home. So uh, like you could see on the social media, every sportman has been uh, working hard from inside and be innovating some new stuff so i've had that um that situation uh, the great thing is i was training hard and the stress level was at zero so there was mm. no way to uh, to try to think about anything you know everything was so stressful with that virus so i wanted to stay safe with the family and training hard so i could do things that i've never done physically and uh, and still i'm just on, on that position i've started back again riding motocross right now but I'm still on the easy uh, amount of moto motorcycle right now uh, per week. And when will you reunite with the team in Holland and start riding with them? No, I'm not in Holland right now. You know, still Netherlands, the border are closed. And still, you know, I'm, I'm every day watching on the calendar and calendar, they still postpone races. So, and still, we don't know, you know, if we will... Uh, uh, be in Russia, you know, until we are there, we don't know. So uh, I'm still taking it easy. I still uh, I ride motocross right now, but I'm still on the on the. I'm still not like four days a week on the bike. I'm having a bike like one or two times uh, fun just to keep the touch. I was really happy, you know, just first time back on the bike after 50 days that my level was was real high. Like after the the second GP, so does that mean uh, what I did physically was great? So uh, so I'm confident right now. I don't need to push that hard. Uh, we mm. still uh, around 80 days to the first to the third round of the of the series, so uh, I'm taking it easy. And beginning of June, everything should be more quite clarified, you know, for the schedule, where to ride, when to ride, and also for the for the next GP. So uh, and that would be the the um, the really strict uh, motorcycle program. But do you have plans to see the team in Holland before the GP start? Pardon? Um, do you have plans to see the team in Holland before the GP start again? Yeah, when, when will you return back to your base? Um, no, I didn't. So right now, I don't 
no. Right now, uh, I don't have a plan to go to the team. The team will be um, maybe second week of June, but that's not fixed yet. So we are every pretty much two times a week on touch. You know, we keep in touch to know where when we can go. But right now, it's still tough. You know, in Netherlands, there is not that much tracks. And if you want to ride, the logistic, the logistic is high. You know, you need to reserve, book, and there is plenty of rider. So I prefer to be away. And also, I don't want to be like with, with my guys. You know, I want to stay away, just be with my training mechanic. And that's what I do right now. Just to see less people is the best way to stay away, keep the distance. And I'm still on that program. So we'll see half of June what to do. Okay. All right. Well, look, um, from a racing point of view this season, there's not been too much happening, just two rounds. But uh, how was Matterley for you? Uh, you came away from there six overall, got a fourth in the second race. Um, are you happy with the way things went overall? I'm, I'm uh, struggling, guys, with the, to hear you. Uh, sorry, can you hear me now? I'm hearing you. Can, can you hear me it's now? Good thing. It's, like, oh, 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 oh. it's like you take a whoop uh -huh. section. <laughs> <laughs> now I can hear you. Okay. Uh, just talking about Matali, um, just that uh, you came away from there sixth overall and a, a fourth in the second race. Were you happy with the way things went in general at that first round? Obviously, the first two rounds, you know, no, I'm not happy with the result, you know. Um, I'm not happy with the with the result, um, but still, the 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 riding was really really good. So I'm really happy with the with the riding. Um, I need to start has been a bit of struggle. I've had some crash in uh, in Matale Basin. Uh, track was really conditioned were tough. The try was really tough to pass. Um, in in Valkensvard also, you know, crash in the in the second uh, second moto was was pretty bad and makes my race uh, not the way I want it. You know, it looks like uh, I've missed some uh, few little things, but I was uh, I was uh, I was happy with the with the riding way. So that's the main thing. Uh, and in Matali, other riders we spoke to commented about the conditions in that race too, particularly the light. Um, but that weekend we had a bit of everything. We had rain, we had wind, we had we had snow even. So it was quite a difficult weekend. You know, when they put Matali at the first round, actually wintertime training, you know it's going to be this way. You know it's going to be this way. So that, that's it. You know, I was training for it. But Matali, we've had such a good track. Such a good track. Seems it uh, looks like it was far away. But uh, the first GP was great. Actually, the track was really gnarly and really nice. Um, I had a crash. The, the race was uh, the way it was. The most gnarly, I would say, was, uh, was Valkensvard. But uh, Matale, in the end, I think we've had a, a real motocross uh, race. When the weather is up and down like that, is it difficult to know how to prepare? For example, goggles or, or even tyre choice? I'm struggling, guys. Sorry for, for the connection, but I'm really struggling to hear you. Okay. Um, I'm um, struggling to hear you. I said, when, when the weather is up and down like that, Gaultier, is it difficult to know how to prepare for a race? For example, goggles or tyre choice, it's very like this. It's tough, you know, uh, we've had actually, if you start to talk about tyres, you know, tyre choice, when we go to a um, muddy GP condition, we have like, uh, for example, Matale Basin round one, we can go to, with the sand tire because you know it clean out much more the mud and also right now with that mesh for the starts it's pretty um, pretty tough to don't have spin and actually uh, mm -hmm. it's not a secret because every guy every tire guys can check you know uh, which tire or which company is riding and racing with so most <coughs> of the guys uh, in uh, many of the guys in Matale ra race with uh, with the sand tire because it clean out much more the mud we don't have spin on the mesh and also, um, and also now we still have really a lot of grip on the angle. So 
it's a it's a tough choice because the dr the condition are drying real fast and uh, Matale was could rain uh, every second and was really humid and stuff. But uh, but yeah, tire condition are really important in those moments. But we have the people you know around really uh, giving uh, advice and uh, we check a bit uh, what the other guys do. But uh, in the end, myself, I really choose and I really know what I do during the training time. So I really choose what I want. You know, I don't watch at the others. I watch on my feeling during the practice. And have a check one hour before the race and go sometimes after a sighting lap we change tire you know because we have doubt but that's really rarely for myself okay well you mentioned um a few moments ago about holland uh, when you were talking about matley as well obviously there was more bad weather there um i guess there were more mixed emotions from that race as well because your first race was really good and then the second one as you said you went down in the crash and in the start crash and it kind of ruined your your weekend um but, you know, it wasn't an easy weekend for anybody, was it? You know, Holland, um, it's a bit strange because right now is the virus. You know, when we are during the season, in the season, we don't talk. Actually, uh, for, for myself, I don't give info. But right now, it looks like we are. It looks like it was last year race. You know, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna tell you the. Oh, just uh, one. Yeah, we've just got a slight issue there with uh, Gauthier's connection. Um, we'll get back to him in just a few moments. But um, Lisa, um, great to see him looking so relaxed, though, isn't it? Um, obviously, while we were setting up, we saw his location, saw him spending time with his uh, little girl. Um, yeah. How cute is she? She's gorgeous. And it's, it's exactly, you know, what you said. He's so relaxed. And um, he said that's what he wants to focus on. He's been training and he's been keeping up with, you know, his fitness levels. But he hasn't put any pressure on himself because he doesn't need to. And you can see that, you know, like you said, when we were just setting up, so relaxed and just chilled out. And I think, I think that's important at these, these times, really. Even talking yeah. about, he was going to give us some information there about Vulcan's world, but uh, some inside information, I think. But uh, he seems super chilled, which is good. Hopefully we'll yeah, be yeah. able to get him back. <laughs> yeah, well, um, if we don't, what we will do is um, we'll, we'll play you a nice little video clip, a, a compilation of some uh, little bit misfortune uh, from the Netherlands, from uh, various riders. So, so I can see our guy Christian there getting ready to queue it up. Um, some of the, uh, the, uh, the crashes from uh, Valkens Wild from all riders over the weekend. Are you ready with that video, Christian? <laughs> so uh, let's just... Uh, Let's just play that and then we'll catch up with Gotcha in just a couple of moments. Big high side and down. Oh. And just behind the umbrellas, we can't see exactly what happened, whether he got hit, but Yago Kitts will not feature on the podium here today. Lighting it up. Whoa, let almost crashing. Yeah. 
sure it might, it might have been. Oh, and a uh, man off the bike. Jeremy Seaway picks himself up, but he was very lucky not to get hit there. By the number 41. So, as you can see, Gautier is back with us. Uh, Gautier, just a uh, temporary loss in connection there for you. Are you uh, okay? You can still hear us? Oh. Oh. You can't hear us now. Maybe if he can... Uh... Apologies here for uh, this, uh, this connection. Maybe if he can just refresh his page, um, maybe we can get a message to him. But... Uh... We'll get back to Gautier in just a moment. But uh, before we lost um, Gautier there, I think he just needs to refresh his uh, connection, but he's not able to hear us at the moment. But um, anyway, Lisa, before yeah. we, uh, we lost <laughs> Gautier there, and uh, I can see him just reconnecting now. So uh, hopefully it won't be too long before we're back with him. Um, but just this is, <laughs> this is technology, unfortunately. Um, the first two rounds, I mean, how were they for you personally? And I know they were bitterly cold for me in the broom cupboard. I mean, oh, yeah, in your little uh, broom <laughs> cupboard while I was out on the front line taking one for the team. Um, no, I mean, it's when you go to, uh, you know, the first round, Matali and, and Balkans Ward, you do expect, and uh, Gaultier said it himself, you expect the weather to be up and down. You expect it not to be nice and sunny and it's going to be muddy. It's going to be difficult for the riders and for us. But that's what you expect when you prepare for it. But just looking at that clip there, Paul, um, of Balkans Ward, and, you know, we saw some of the drama that happened on track. I mean, that happens, but it did lend itself to some really good racing, Balkans Ward. I mean, we had Tim on the, on the show a couple of weeks ago and how he fought from the back of the pack to the start. And so did Gaultier, really. So um, it did lend itself to some good racing, despite the sort of up and down weather conditions. Yeah, 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 you're right. And um, obviously, at the moment, we're in a temporary pause in, in terms of the calendar, although obviously the, there was a new calendar published a couple of weeks ago, um, starting in Russia yep. in August. Um, but uh, the good news is, I guess, that everywhere seems to be opening again. Uh, borders are opening uh, in places. Uh, certainly, motocross tracks are starting to reopen and riders are getting out, as uh, mm -hmm. Gautier said, down there in the south of France. He's able to ride. Um, he's, he's got a track that he goes to. And uh, right, we can hear Gautier, just needs to rotate his camera there. Um, but um, in terms of riders, obviously I'm up here in Belgium, they're getting out on a regular basis now. Yeah. And um, also in the Netherlands, they're getting out. So from that side, at least the riders are able to train and, um, you know, get back to what they're doing, what they know they can do. Um, it's just a matter of, uh, you know, the, the racing now how much time do these guys need to yeah. re-prepare because they've already had an off season they've had two races and now they're back in an off season again you know so um <laughs> i think that's the, that's going to be the toughest point because as i think we mentioned with uh might have been tony last week you're coming straight in having no pre-season races now when you come into the next gp so it's um it's not going to be easy for the guys by any means but um you know out of the the tracks that are uh, you know that we've got to come on, on the calendar, Lisa, which is the favourite one for you? Which is the one that you're most looking forward to going to? I think we've spoken to a lot of guys about it and everyone said the same as me. It's, it's, it's Argentina. Um, and that's, and, but that's nice. It's nice for us to start looking forward now. Like you said, a lot of tracks are starting to reopen. Um, the restrictions are starting to lift in different countries. Um, and it does make you feel like there is light at the end of the tunnel. Um, it has been a tough time for everyone, but especially for the riders. Now that they can actually get back on the bike, it gives you a focus. Okay, we don't know exactly when we're going to be back, but that focus is there now. You know, it's, we can start moving forward and aiming towards our season starting again. And I think that's important for everyone psychologically as, as well. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and how cool will it be to be back in the paddock as well, you know, just to sort of start saying hello to everybody. And uh, I mean, that's probably the thing that we all miss the most, isn't it? The camaraderie that that the paddock yeah. kind of offers everybody. Um, you know, you can sit there and say, oh, I don't have many friends, but actually, you know, we've got comrades and, and colleagues and, and, uh, and all of that. And it's always great to touch base with them on a weekly basis. It's like a little traveling family circus. But during, Paul, during the season, we see our race family more than our normal family. So it's like a family for all of us. 
And obviously when you take that away, you miss, you miss that. But yeah, I'm, you know, that's one thing that I'm really looking forward to is, you know, seeing so many people again, speaking to the riders again, speaking to, you know, my colleagues uh, and, and also getting that atmosphere back because it's the atmosphere of the racing, especially during the season that, that I certainly miss. And I think everyone else does as well, but uh you know, hopefully we'll get that back, Paul, sooner rather than later. All right. Well, look, uh, Gautier is back in uh, in the building. Uh, apologies for the loss of connection there. But uh, Gautier, hopefully you can hear us again now. And I'm, I'm sorry for that. But uh, everything OK down there? It looks like a, a glorious day. So it's not the storms. <laughs> Obviously, I'm really sorry about everything what happened. The connection uh, it's uh, not was your fault. bad. So the connection wa 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 was great uh, outside. And uh, finally, everything went too warm. <laughs> so Typical. the phone stopped, the computer stopped, and I start to run, put the phone in the fridge. <laughs> Sorry about that. You put your so phone let's say, do you want to, to start again with, uh, with the GP number two in Valkenswald? What, uh, what we do? Tell me. Well, yeah, 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 we can do. It was just the fact that we, we spoke about Holland saying there was more bad weather and maybe mixed emotions because obviously you had a great first race. The second race, you got caught up in that um, first corner crash. And um, obviously that kind of dampened things a little bit and cost you uh, vital world championship points. Um, another issue there. We'll, we'll get him back in a moment. But um, anyway, he, he, as soon as he's back, we'll, we'll get him back in. But uh, he was unfortunate, actually, because the first race he was riding good. And this is a venue, Lisa, don't forget, that he's won at twice in the, in the past few years. Um, you know, and so uh, at the very least, you can imagine that he was challenging for a podium. Absolutely. And then, of course, because it is one of the first rounds of the season, you want to do well. I mean, it gives you that kind of positive boost for the rest of the, the, rest of the races to come. Um, but of course, if, you, if you've been on the podium, you, you, you do aim for that. You know, that's the least that you're going to aim for, especially for, for the riders. So uh, it would have been tough and definitely mixed conditions as, as the same as the weather, mixed weather conditions for everyone. Yeah, sure. So uh, sorry about that. Uh, Gautier, you rejoin us again. Um, yeah, just briefly then, uh, Valkenswald, how difficult was it for you? No, no sound. <laughs> okay, apologies for that, guys. But um, look how dark it was, though. I mean, we were talking about the, the weather in Matterley at the end of February and the, and the contrast, you know, and, and this looked like it might have been in, in September or October. But, but it's funny, Gautier said just watching that, it actually seems like that was last year or something, not like this year. So, you know, we're all coming into nicer weather now and it actually seems like that was last year. It seems so long ago now uh, looking at that. But, but what do you expect? At least, you remember that year when we had the snow at Vulcanswood? Like it was full on snow. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, that's, that, that was good conditions, I think, for, for Holland. Yeah. I mean, obviously, before we, we came on air with Gautier, I mean, all the tests were good and, and the connection was good and, and all of the rest of it. And while we were talking to him off air, um, he, he was saying, you know, A, how relaxed he was, how well he'd worked in the off season, and I guess how he was looking forward to, to doing a good job this year. And, um, you know, two rounds down, while he's six in the championship, we're talking to a rider who, on the face of it, has, um, you know, high expectations and, is really probably not happy with that sixth place where he currently sits in the, in the championship at the moment because of a, a crash in Holland, uh, not through any fault of his own. Um, and then, um, you know, it's just, uh, it's just how it is at the moment, but we've still got more than enough rounds left in the championship for things to turn around, I guess. Absolutely. And I think you actually mentioned it to, I think, Livia in your, your Instagram live, you know, the start of the season, perhaps it didn't go as well, but then, because we've had this, it, 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 doesn't, it doesn't matter so much because you've got the rest of the full championship to go, you know. So the first couple of races, okay, you might have a bad weekend. But then I know a lot of the guys, the riders, the teams will focus on what's to come, not what's been. But it's just been difficult, especially I think maybe for Gaultier because the second round happened and then nothing. Then we've had this whole situation. So it's hard not to... Think about yes. that last round because there's nothing else yes. to come. Um, Can you hear me? But like you said, we've still got so many more GPs to come, and now it's a case of just trying to focus towards those. Hopefully, we're past the worst with everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Third time lucky. 
Let's see if we can go back down to Gautier Paul and uh, Monster Energy Yamaha Factory MXGP team. I can, I, I um, so uh, Gautier can't hear me at the moment. So um, wow, well, um, massive problems at the moment then with uh, with the technology down there. So uh, hopefully he can uh, refresh and uh, and we can get him back in just a moment. But uh, yeah. yeah. Not an easy one, this one today. <laughs> no, it all started off so like, well. I mean, this happens though. It's it's technology. It's uh, it's our virtual studio show. These things happen. You know, I think it's fantastic that we can just even almost get together virtually. But there's always going to be some sort of gremlins in the work somewhere. Um, yeah, yeah. It's difficult. It's difficult because we were speaking to Gautier, um, and it must have been a good forty-five minutes before we went live. And everything yeah. seems to be okay. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's going to happen, isn't it? I mean, I think that's only, only normal with this, <clears throat> this situation. Mm. Well, actually, it's quite strange because last week when we had Tony on, um, yeah. they were having storms and he was having antenna issues and you were having storms storm in Barcelona. Well. In Barcelona, And then obviously we lost your connection while we were setting up but managed to get through it. And um, here I am in cloudy, windy Belgium, and uh, <laughs> everything is okay. Even the chocolates, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, it, does, um, it does happen. It does happen. But uh, yeah. Oh yeah. well. So um, hopefully we can get him back soon. How much are you missing jumping on airplanes week in, week out at the moment? I've said this. I mean, we've had so many of our Instagram lives. I know you do your Instagram live on Tuesdays. I do it on Thursdays. And pretty much every live that I've done, I've spoken to someone. I've said, do you know what I really miss? I really miss getting, going to an airport and going on flights. I don't even mind if it's a long haul flight. I miss it. Yeah, but yeah, it's, yeah. Just, it's strange, the psychology behind it, because this is something that during the season when you're traveling so much, it's perhaps not the best part of it. But I would yeah. love to be back at a crowded airport, queuing at that coffee shop on a busy flight. I'd take that any day of the week right now. But uh, yeah, you, do you miss it? I do, do actually. And I do miss traveling. Actually, the long haul ones are the ones I miss the most because you can yeah. just turn your phone off and just switch off and relax and, um, you know, and, and, just, and just, just enjoy the flight. But uh, right. Let's just try one more final time here. And um, Gautier, can you hear us? Can you hear me, Gautier? Okay. Hopefully We're you can back hear with us. Him. Um, but I tell you what, let's, um, if you want to talk about Holland briefly, um, you still can if you want. Obviously, uh, mixed emotions, as we said. Great first race, difficult second race. That first turn crash didn't help. But um, overall, were you impressed with the way that you were able to come through? And um, were you happy with your riding as a result? You know, Holland has been really terrible for me. I really, I'm really not happy with the weekend. Actually, I was feeling really good. We've had a good training. And uh, we went with uh, some uh, good practice, good lap time. And uh, finally, um, at, the, at the qualifying race, you know, we get qualifying race to get uh, ourselves on the start gate. And um, we've had an issue um, with the bike uh, that didn't help. I was fighting with uh, with Jeffrey and uh, and with the guys up front and uh, to to be on the top three for the um, for the for the gate pick on the on the on the Sunday. And uh, we've had an issue. I had to slow down really, really, really big time to finish like 16. So my place on the gate was real bad. Uh, I was having a lot of uh, of um, of water out of my gate so it didn't help first moto i take a lot of risk on the first lap to put myself on a okay position which the a good position is up front um, but i was i was okay after the first lap and ended up um, top five but second moto i had a crash which okay it's um you would tell me like tim have a dnf uh, but tim had some uh, insane start like like we rarely see Mm -hmm. And uh, I did not, and I ended up in a crash in second moto, which makes my weekend really difficult. So the weekend doesn't reflect uh, the, the work we've, uh, we've, we've done and, uh, and the speed I've had in, in Valkinsvard. But that's it, you know, right now we need to, to get out of uh, Valkinsvard with, uh, with uh, know what we've done uh, wrong and, uh, and to progress. So uh, team and I uh, do, um, because it's true that when you, have a bad, um, when you have a bad Saturday, it's pretty tough. Team have had a bad Saturday and make it really, really strong. But uh, yeah, need to learn from everything and and be uh, and be on the good spot next time. 
Well, overall, would you say you were well prepared for the season with the work that you did during the winter and testing and, and all of this? Yeah, look. Just give him one second to uh, reconfigure. So uh, again, we've lost him. Um, I guess at some point we're just going <laughs> to maybe have to bin this one, but uh, hopefully yeah. we just get him back one more time. Um, but uh, yeah, frustrating for him, as you can see. But um, yeah, yeah, I mean, I don't know. it's interesting what he said there. Like when you have a bad Saturday, it is really difficult to kind of change your frame of mind for the Sunday. And he mentioned Tim, you know, mm. Tim had a shocking Saturday, but then he totally changed it around. But that's, that, that doesn't happen that often, especially like a track like Vulcan's World, yes, where it is so difficult to pass on. Yeah. How are you, everybody? But they couldn't hear. But, um, right, let me, uh, let me try one more time then uh, with yes. Gautier. Um, Gautier, if you can hear us, um, overall, would you say you were well prepared for this season um, in terms of the work that you did during the winter and uh, all of the testing that went on behind the scenes as well? Yes, I really, um, obviously, it's the best uh, winter preparation I've had. It's the, um, yeah, it's pretty much the best bike I've had until now. So I'm on a good spot. Still, the season is on, you know, I need to, uh, I need to finish that season well. You know? We started, yeah. um, we started uh, with two rounds that didn't reflect, we really, like, didn't have any win, any podium, but I'm feeling great. We've had a good winter. Okay, well, looking forward uh, to much further on in the year. Um, Motocross and Nations at Erne. You're a five-time winner of this event. Would you say that uh, Erne 2015 is probably one of your most memorable Motocross and Nations victories because of where it was a French rider winning on home soil? You know, winning, it's always a different taste everywhere. But uh, Erne was a special one uh, with a lot of French uh, people. Obviously, um, it's it's hard to say, but uh, the the way I could really feel them was racing. Out of racing, we had really to protect ourselves to just stay focused and just be ready for for the next race and next race and next race to end up on the win. I've had some uh, really good teammates, and uh, and and having that trophy up in front of the home crowd was really uh, really 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 great. Watching back at this race, it was crazy because I've obviously um, we did win the race on the last round. So the adrenaline was up until the last round. But um, I could have a, a lot of, uh, of how do you say, ch chicken, chicken skin, skin you know, yeah. like goosebumps. Yeah. The, yeah. At the presentation, it was really crazy when the speakers start to say Gauthier, all the crowd, Paulin, then Marvin, Ruskin, and then Romain, Fev was really like, wow like such a big uh emotional it's it was a really emotional day for my career yeah, yeah. and the french fans are always fantastic can't wait for that till at the end of yeah, the year can't hear this um, anymore. okay Can we'll look okay? Uh, Can you um, me? we'll get uh go share back in just a second yeah. um what we will do in a moment, though, with uh, Gautier is um, show him a selection of pictures. Hopefully, you can see them, actually, because I noticed he may have changed his device. Um, he was using his laptop, and uh, now it looks like he's on his phone. Um, and in the past, uh, Gautier, if you can hear us, uh, can you hear Lisa now? Can you hear me, Gautier? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm going to break the phone soon. Fantastic. Try. <laughs> no problem. Sorry. It happens. It happens. <laughs> Yeah. Um, shall we move on to the uh, the pictures and show Gautier? Yeah. Uh, Gautier Hopefully he can have, see them. We have some pictures, okay? And what we would like you to do is explain to us what's going on in the pictures and what they mean to you, okay? Okay, let's go. Okay, so the first one is this one. How important is this race to you and do you enjoy it or do you find it stressful sometimes? I enjoy it because Motocross of Nation, I always repeat myself, but you know, it's end up of a good season in France. We have many good ra racers and it's not because I've done like 10 times Motocross of Nation with five wins that, that it's secure that I will be in the team. If this year I'm not on a le good level, uh, I'm not going to be racing for Team France. So I always need to defend my spot and that there is so many good racers, it means that the level is really high and being at that race, it's, uh, it's really important. And then having my flag up, it's uh, it's it's such a such a good feeling. Um, I really like this race, and I like also I really love what the fan give to me for this race. Uh, this the country support, 
and how they are involved behind countries. You know, like we have uh, some some people coming, commenting, being positive or negative, whatever. You know, they give their blood for that race, so I really love it. Absolutely. Uh, next photo. Uh, just tell us what are you thinking about Priscilla. when you're on the podium? Because you really are in the moment there. So we've obviously got a, a picture of Gautier here oh. on the podium. Um, this will be from last year, actually, where he had a handful of podiums. Um, it was a, a good year for the, the team that he was racing for last year, of course, which is now the Monster Energy Factory team. Um, so and um, Gautier. hopefully, Gautier, you can see this next image. Um, what, I'm, what I'm thinking when I'm on the podium, it's really, sorry, I, I lost Yeah, That's yeah. okay. Um, is it, when I'm what are you podium. thinking about? It was a bit of revenge of, of everything, you know, I've had, uh, last year I've had a, a crash um, because I'm not the guy who mentioned all, you know, to the media and I, some people sometimes have x-ray and broke something and, you know, sometimes you can think Poland is up and down and, uh, and you don't know why and, and stuff, but I'm not someone like having, having a problem and posting it on social media to, to just having an excuse. I prefer to keep everything for myself to don't give my adversity some, some strengths, uh, knowing like when an animal is having a problem, you know, for sure you get hit. And, uh, and I'm pretty thinking this way, I get away from uh, some uh, bad situation by, by being back on the podium. So it was a revenge on, on myself and everything is internal. Uh, I leave everything internally. I don't really talk a lot and I don't give a lot of uh, information outside. But uh, yeah, being on that yeah. podium watching up was, uh, was, uh, was meaning a lot to me uh, because I was out from a tough situation. Yeah, well, and your face says it all. Going. Do you know how yes. many times you've actually stood on the podium? I don't know. I don't watch that. Uh, no, I don't know. Do you know? Yes. It's actually 57 times Gosh. you've been on the podium. Do you know how many times you've actually stood on the podium? It's good, I don't. <laughs> 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 You've got a twin sister knocking around in the south of France there, Lisa, because I just heard what? her in the background. <laughs> he doesn't know. I wanted to, I, I wish, uh, not, not many actually riders do know. I think you said the same to uh, uh, Tony, maybe, how many times. And it's actually a surprise to many of them when you tell yeah, them yeah. how many times they've stood on the podium. Yeah, I think so, Jeffrey's the only I, one that kind of pays attention to all of that, you know, with his <laughs> yeah. race wins and everything else. But uh, here he is. So, so. Um, next picture then. This is to do with training, I guess, Lisa. If you can see it, Gautier. Yeah. Gautier, are you with us? Can you see us? Next picture, we've got this. Where is this? It looks like uh, hard work to me. I was, uh, I was pissed, was in quarantine uh, in Switzerland <laughs> and uh, I couldn't get outside with, uh, with all the virus going on. Um, it's, uh, it was really frustrating. So, um, it's such a good place. Uh, I made this place uh, going, uh, going winter training since my first professional career every uh, November, every time in November or December, I go to a boot camp uh, in altitude and uh, it's how I meet this place. So uh, it's definitely a place I love. My heart is there and I really uh, enjoy it. Uh, I'm someone who never take the same trail, and uh, I think you would need a. Uh, the life is not that that long to 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 meet all the places and to learn all the trail, and that's a place where I really go every day to a new trail, and I really enjoy uh, doing what I what I love. So uh, I really like it. So I really go there often to um, just to 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 be stronger. It's incredible. It looks like a, a beautiful place. Um, and good for your mind as well, well isn't it? It's good to clear your mind at places like that. Okay. Next one. Uh, next photo. If you can see this, um, how important are your fans to you, Gaultier? And do you enjoy these monster riots? Uh, next photo. <laughs> can you hear me now when I talk? I can hear yeah, myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can hear you, Gautier. We can hear you. Oh, I think he okay. might have gone again. <laughs> so he's just disappeared again. Really, really frustrating for him. But uh, Yeah. And, well, 
being at MXGP week in, week out, Lisa, we know how much of a fan favorite he is uh, when they do the Monster Riot. So when we get him back, it'll be interesting to uh, get his opinion on that because he uh, doesn't normally turn down requests, does he, for, for autographs and, and things like that, you know, um, and very, very popular on home soil in France, but uh, all the world over as well. Yeah, and I think it was interesting what he says when, when he's on the podium, the fans give him something back. And that's that's the truth, isn't it? Especially the like, French fans. That there's something that they give back to you. I mean, we even saw it in that photo there when he's taking his selfie. That means so much to to the riders. So it's so good for them to have that back. That makes it worth it makes it worth it, doesn't it? Absolutely. And obviously you probably see more of those monster rights than I do because they're normally happening happening uh, during a time when we've probably got European championship races or WMX races. Um, and you're out and about. I'm I'm, you know in the broom cupboard kind of uh, yeah. calling those races. So I miss out on that, you know, that great sense of atmosphere that we have um, over at the, uh, you know, the Monster Energy Rig. No, but it's, it's what you were saying, like you're missing, uh, obviously we're all missing going back to the paddock, going back to the races, but a lot of that is because of the fans and the atmosphere that they create. And it's really interesting how every, almost every spot on the calendar, whether we're in Lockett, whether we're in France, Italy, um, have different, the fans are different, but that enthusiasm and that passion is is there. But Gautier is is clearly a fan favourite, isn't he? Yeah. Well, um, let's just uh, give him one more chance. Um, he's doing a headstand at the moment. Um, <laughs> so if he can just uh, rotate his device, then uh, we'll get him back as soon as possible. Um, just see him there waiting in the wings. Here we go. So I know he can hear us. And um, for the 17th different time today, <laughs> Gautier Fallen has changed location. And uh, <laughs> Where are you now? Where is he now? <laughs> oh, oh, we've got no. him, but now we can't hear him. <laughs> <laughs> Gautier, can you? We can't hear you. No. Maybe if he can just refresh one more time and then hopefully we get him back. But uh, this is oh, kind shame. of getting a little bit, um, it's, it's like shame. one of those. It's a shame. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, um, yeah. We if we, so if we can nice get him back. We have so photos to show Gautier. Yeah. I mean, if, if we get him back one final time, I think if we go straight to, um, right. Can you hear us, Gautier? He can hear us. <laughs> we can't hear you. Ah, frustrating, frustrating. Um, but uh, we'll give him one more. We'll give him one more try. But um, but we don't have his uh, we don't have his uh, volume. That's the, that's the problem. So we can ask him. He can hear us, but uh, we want his answers. And uh, obviously, mm -hmm. we wouldn't get that if uh, we we don't hear his volume. So uh, apologies today, guys, for the uh, the broadcast. Obviously, it's all uh, dependent on connection and everything else. But, uh, you know, we're now eight shows in, and this is the first time that it's happened. And, you know, unfortunately, it's happening to uh, one of the most charismatic riders in the, in the paddock. Oh, and, no. uh, you know, very, very funny guy as well when you get him, you know, in the right place. And, um, and like I say, 45 minutes while we were kind of behind the scenes setting up, uh, we were having a blast with him, you know. And um, it's just a shame that the live version – has not kind of um, panned out for us, but if we get him back, if we if we get him back, let's see if I can um, give him a quick um, call here, and um, let's see if this works. Hey, Gautier, <laughs> so you're live on the uh, on the phone. So um, basically, we'll we'll finish this just with you on the phone. Maybe actually, if you can. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if you can reconnect, actually, but we'll we'll do this by phone. Um, the the picture that we showed a moment ago was you with um, with the with the with the, with the Monster Riot fans. Yeah, how important are the fans to you, and do you enjoy those Monster Riots on the weekends? Obviously, you know, I'm really uh, on off on everything I do, so I'm really concentrate on everything I do when I get changed, when I'm uh, under the tent, seeing no one, but uh, then when I get out and um, it's it's really tough, you know. I see the fan out in the paddock, and they want to have a picture and stuff. And I try to regroup everybody, you know, to the monster. Come to the monster because I need to to have a really um, 
time schedule. So going to the monastery, it's really important. And then meeting the fan up there, it's uh, it's really uh, insane, actually. The fan are important, you know, they give so much support. I feel uh, I feel really grateful to have fans like this all over the world because um, they are always so happy. Sometimes they, they see you, they know everything about you. You can see that there is a real follow, you know, it's not Instagram, Facebook or whatever. It's really like they... they, they it's a passion for them. It takes everything. So I'm grateful to always see them, trying to give them time, even if it's uh, it's really tough. But uh, but I have a, a lot of uh, I enjoy going to the most every game weekend. Okay, and uh, we have a, a video. I think that was uh, probably on your Instagram where you're sort of uh, pulling up, uh, doing the arm workout. It's like an isolation gym workout with uh, with your little baby <laughs> yeah. on the balcony. Um, and it's got a fantastic view in the background. And I'm quite disappointed actually that we can't. Get you know to see this uh, live in in the way that we wanted to. But um, how was the little girl? How is fatherhood for you? And um, you know how has it changed your life? That it has been changing my life. Uh, first of all, I wasn't really uh, into babies, you know, like crazy about baby and stuff. Uh, but I wanted to have one. But I was really concentrated on uh, on only motocross. And um, all my friends, all my family has been telling me, my team telling me that it will change you. And uh, in fact, uh, it didn't change at all my perception of the sport, of the adrenaline, of the concentration, on the, fo of, on the focus on what I do. But it totally gives me strength to really cut everything I do in life. You know, like uh, when, I, when I go to do sport, I'm 100%. When I, when I go in, in the house, I'm 100%. When I get to, to see my little one be with her, I just forget everything. And it's just a, such a, a good moment. It's nice to see uh, how life goes on. It's, uh, it has been changing me. It's, how, it's nice to see how she progress. Um, it's, it's, it's really nice. She gives me uh, so much love, uh, gives sense to the family. And, uh, and it's also something uh, really nice. Uh, what I'm going to say it's people come to see her or not to see me. And being a sportsman, a lot of times, you know, people have kind of a little bit of... Um, of, uh, when when they see you, you know they are really like happy to see you for who you are, but also for what you do. And right now, people don't come to see me; they come to see her, and it's uh, and it, it it gives me uh, yeah, a lot of happiness. Okay, well, look, um, Gautier, um we'll leave it there for you. Um, apologies for the for the connection, and uh, you know, um... I've tried my best. I'm really sorry for for that connection. Um, everything gets warm uh, when uh, when we set up everything uh, this morning, and then the phone gets too hot, the computer gets too hot, everything stopped, and then I struggled and I'm already hard to get the connection back. So I apologize to to the fans. Uh, I tried to be uh, ready at my best, but I wasn't. So maybe we'll do it another time. Maybe not. But uh, hopefully uh, everybody stays safe, and hopefully. Uh, I don't meet you on the live stream, but I uh, meet you in real next time uh, that the corona is away and that we are back on autocross track and, I can, and that I can see everybody not behind the computer, but uh, for real. Yeah, well, I know that we've had a lot of uh, love coming in from you from all over the world, from Thailand, from Indonesia, from Argentina, uh, Greece, the US, everywhere. Um, and uh, as, like I say, because of the, the difficulties that we've had today with this broadcast, uh, you know, we've unfortunately been able to uh, get some of those questions to you uh, via Facebook but um, from the fan, sorry uh, Paul do you know or maybe you've had some uh, some comments do you know that still uh, when uh, when we go to um, when uh, when we are going to Thailand to the last GP they call me flying man from that first jump I've done the, that big jump oh the big uh, the big triple in the middle yeah, so when they see me, they're, they're flying man, flying man. It's really, uh, it's really nice when, uh, <laughs> they still remember that day and maybe watch the the video of that huge jump. Yeah, so it's fun. I, I really That's love uh, being in Thailand. They are the final. Are really, uh, are really awesome. Yeah, that was a big jump. And actually, yeah, you, 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 I, there was an invisible cape behind you as you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you need to post it so that people can uh, can vision it. I'm sure we can dig out a photo and uh, we can caption yeah. it. Yeah, the flying man. All right. <laughs>
<laughs> but uh, Gautier, <laughs> thank you for your time. Uh, apologies again from, from our side as well that uh, on such a difficult broadcast, but um, thankfully you kept there and, and hung in there till the end. But we will see you at a racetrack soon and uh, we will get you on a real studio show and maybe we can uh, finish off some of those uh, questions that we were going to ask you um, with pictures uh, today. But uh, Gautier, Paul and everybody, and thanks Gautier. All the best, thank you. Thank you, bye-bye. So, um, I think we're out of time, guys. <laughs> um, but it's a shame. I mean, it's one of those things, Paul. It happens. Like you said, this is the eighth show in, and it, and it happens. But, um, you know, we spoke to Gautier, and hopefully, like he said, we'll be able to see him and catch up properly at a race. So, um, it's exactly. one of those. Yeah. Well, look, um, as we said, uh, eight eight studio shows in virtually and uh, this is the first one that we had some serious technical issues but uh, apologies and uh, hopefully it didn't ruin your broad broadcast too much but um, we will be back next Saturday with Paul Jonas um, Rockstar Energy has fine factory racing but join me on Tuesday at 10 o'clock in the morning while I while I will have uh, Stefan Rabini the uh, Honda racing as motor rider rides in MX2 uh, that's at 10 o'clock. Uh, Lisa, you will be back on Thursday at 10 o'clock in the morning with... Thursday with Ben Watson. Okay, yeah. so uh, we'll Ben be Watson. And that's Instagram Live on Tuesday and Thursday, 10 o'clock with me and with Lisa. So uh, thanks for watching. We will see you next time. Do you want to finish this off, Lisa? Yeah, just, um, yeah. Bye Sorry for now. About the... Yeah, <laughs> bye for now. <laughs> the, thanks the for usual. watching. <laughs> bye for now. <laughs> and I hope I got that pronunciation correct. <laughs> All right, we're going. We'll see you next time. <laughs>